Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rechav Wadash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name in ancient Hebrew, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, the Savior and Redeemer of the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. And the Rechav Wadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Truth. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect men, women, and children that have repented, listening and learning, staying in the Holy Spirit, and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai day in and day out. So I just want to do a lesson, um, Lord willing, uh, on this, uh, centered around this uh, precept here, or the scripture rather here in John, the fifth chapter. Um, the point is in the 27th verse, but I'm going to start at the 25th verse. And it's just, you know, Yahweh Shai was uh, speaking about his authority, all right, and, um, you know, uh, uh, his um, preeminence, right, his um, position as being the um, son of God, okay? And we know that the Heavenly Father has appointed Yahweh Shai to be the heirs of the things that, uh, you know, all things that were created, Okay, and um, in the beginning, we know that the Heavenly Father uh, created Yahweh Shai, right? Which is why he is known as the only begotten of the Most High. And it's through Yahweh Shai that all things else, you know, um, exist. All right, as it says in the book of Colossians. Uh, actually, let me pull that up real quick before I jump into John, the fifth chapter. In the book of Colossians, chapter one, um, just going straight to the point. Um, one verse, let's start at verse 15. It says, who is the invisible, invisible, so like it, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature? So Yahweh Shai is the visible image of the most high, all right? Because as the scripture says that the most high is a God who hideth himself, right? It's also written that no man uh, can see the heavenly, the heavenly Father and live, all right. Flesh cannot um, partake or behold, okay, the uh, the majesty, all right, and seeing the heavenly Father face to face, and you know, con continue to exist in this in this uh, flesh, you know. Uh, however, it may happen, your body will not be able to sustain the um, immense power and and, and glory of the heavenly father without you know you basically giving up the spirit all right so the heavenly father um gave us and created his uh son right to be the visible image all right the visible to the wood to the eye right to the uh to the um as they say the naked eye right the the, the human eye yahweh shai is the visible image of the invisible power the first born of every creature it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and, in, and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Okay, so this is speaking once again about the um the the authority and the uh, preeminence that Yahweh Shai has all things exist okay he existed before all things and all things uh exist you know because of him because the heavenly father gave him the um the authority to create everything else okay so now when we go here to, to John the fifth chapter start at 25 it says verily verily I say unto you the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son uh, to have life in himself. Right? So it says the Father has life in himself and has granted the same life-giving power to his Son. All right? Meaning what? That nothing can be alive except it has the breath of Yahweh. All right, life comes from the Heavenly Father. You are you cannot find anything that is living that the Heavenly Father has not created. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, if it's you know on this earth, which 
um, you know, uh, uh, you know, some, you know, brothers speculate whether, you know, if there's animals or any type of, you know, like animals or plants or anything like that created on other lives, you know, other planets. But, you know, that's that's just speculation, whatever. But even if there were animals or other types of uh, organisms that live on other planets, they all have life because of the Heavenly Father. All right. That's why he says that the Father has life in himself. OK, and he has get, he has granted that same life giving power to his son. So now Yahweh Shai, he has the ability, right, to, to, to uh, uh, give life. So verse 27, it says, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also. So not only has Yahweh Shai has power to uh, give life, which is why Yahweh Shai would be a. Uh, um, was able to raise, you know, from the dead and ultimately, at, as he says, at his voice, right? The dead shall uh, hear his voice and they shall live, all right? Uh, spiritually, okay, we heard the voice of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai through the prophets and those that were dead, you know, the valley of dry bones, those that were dead spiritually, us that were dead spiritually, we are now alive in Yahweh Shai, all right? That is us being born again, okay, on a spiritual level, but on a physical level, you will have uh, at the at the return of Yahweh Shai. You will have uh, um, the ones who are of the elect. Well, really, everybody's going to raise up. Okay, there shall be a resurrection of the just and the unjust, as the scripture says. Okay, but the just will be raised up into uh, uh, eternal life, and the unjust will be raised up into condemnation. Okay, being partakers of that second death, but nonetheless. At the return of Yahweh Shai, all life, right, is going to uh, uh, be present. Okay, all you know, uh, uh, living man, right, women and child will be present at the return of Yahweh Shai. You see, so in that, and for that, and for the reason for that being is, as it says here, he has given him authority to execute judgment. Also, you see, so. Judgment will be executed by Yahweh Shai. All right, it's going to come by the order in the ordinance of the Heavenly Father, but the actual judgment that will be taking place on the earth will be done by Yahweh Shai himself, which he is going to come in likeness of the Son of Man. Okay, which it says right here, because he is the Son of Man. All right, and that is the point. Judgment. Right. Uh, uh, the ability to give life and to take life away. The ability to judge uh, based off of your, your your deeds, whether it be good or whether it be bad. As it says here in the book of Second Corinthians, um, chapter five, verse 10, it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach. And where is that going to take place? Right. The Christian church will have you. Say that that's going to take place, you know, in heaven. No, the Lord Yahweh Shai is coming to bring judgment upon the earth, as uh, it says in the book of Ecclesiastes, right? I uh, saw so under the sun the place of judgment. Okay, the the sun the place the, under the sun the place of judgment is what the earth. That is why even in the Lord's prayer it says on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. You when you die, right, when you go to the spirit world, you do get a, you know, your your judgment on as far as what you did um, in that lifetime. But the final judgment, OK, or, or, you know, the last judgment, the final judgment rather is going to be uh, uh, take place here on the earth. And, and I say the final judgment, I'm speaking about of um Israel, all right, uh, in, uh, in of this age, because in the kingdom, you're still going to have judgments that are going to be set forth based off of these heathens that, you know, break the law. OK, but Israel, the sons of God, that final judgment will be set uh, the day Yahweh Shai returns. All right. And those that once again, as it says, reading, it says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach. That every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. All right. 
So in the NLT, it says, for we must all stand before Hamashiach to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. OK, because once again, it, the, uh, the sons of God, the Israelites. There, the, when Yahweh Shah returns, it's either you're going to be changed into the uh, incorruptible or you're going to partake in that second death. And that will be the, the final judgment, right, that you receive on this side. That will be the final judgment that you will receive in your earthly body. Because when you when the wicked of Israel returns and comes back through the first fruits, right, being uh, um, fruits of that of the of the branch. Right. That is connected to the true vine, which is Yahweh Shai. OK, those first uh, those the, the, the seeds or the offspring of the first fruits will be those spirits of Israel, of the Israelites that receive their final judgment by way of that fire. OK. And Yahweh Shai has the authority to give that judgment. All right. And that judgment is going to be based off of what <laughs> your your faith in him. And your works, ultimately, whether you are the elect or not. All right. Now, the part uh, that I want to key on in this uh, scripture, verse 27, it says he hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. All right. So Yahweh Shai has authority to execute judgment on the earth because he is the son of man. And what does the def or what is the the uh, uh, understanding of him being the son of man. It means that what? Yahweh Shai partook of the flesh and blood. Okay. He came on the scene in flesh and blood. And and really, when you think about even going back to Adam, when, Yah when the heavenly father gave dominion unto Adam, which we know, right? That was Yahweh Shai, right? That same spirit. Yah uh, Adam was in uh, flesh and blood. Okay, Adam had because he was he had the uh, before he you know fell off and committed sin. Adam was was uh, had immortality, right? But then it got taken away from him, right? That tree of life got taken away from him, and then eventually he died because he was uh, in flesh and blood. Yahweh Shai, when he came on the scene, he came in flesh and blood, although. He also had the spirit, right? The, the, you know, scripture says that he had the spirit without measure. So, <clears throat> excuse me, he came as uh, uh, his, uh, in, in a spiritual sense, he came as that perfect um, uh, spirit on the earth, but he had to partake in the uh, sufferings of the, of the flesh and blood. So when we go to um, Hebrews, Right. Uh, Hebrew chapter two. And we'll start at verse um, five. I'm going to read this in the NLT. Right. It says earth subject to man on the on the, the KJV side. And then it says, Yahweh Shai, the man. Right. Because although he is known, he is the son of God. He also uh, is referred to. He refers to himself as the son of man. And even in the Old Testament. When, uh, for instance, which we'll get when Daniel uh, saw him in a vision, he said, what um, one like unto the son of man, because Yahweh Shai, when he returns, he is going to look like a, a human. Right. He's going to look like a, a humanoid. Right. He is going to have skin. He's going to have eyes. He's going to have legs. John the Revelator saw him. Right. He said, uh, I've seen uh, one. Actually, let me pull it up real quick. John chapter one, verse um, 17, so like if uh, four, 13, it says that in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man. Right. So when you say when the when the scripture says son of man it's speaking about a, a human. All right. Somebody that is born of a of a man. Right. And in the way that you obviously you get born of a man is you gotta be, you know, um, you know, have a mother and a father that came together through the process of sex and reproduced, and then ultimately you were born. So when uh, John, when John saw Yahweh Shai, 
he looked like that figure. He looked like a figure of a regular man. However, we know that the body that Yahweh Shai has did not come from, and I'm talking about the body that he has currently at this moment in the heavens, it did not come from the process of reproduction between a man and a woman. Okay? That body was a body that was given uh, uh, to Yahweh Shai by the Heavenly Father, although it appears to look like a man. So that's why it says um, sticks and the candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot with a girt and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So he had a waist, right? He had feet, right? He had a chest. He had all of these things that you see a regular man have. OK, however, as it even says in Isaiah, the 47th chapter, when he speaks about when he visits uh, Babylon, the great, which is America. Right. He says, what? I shall not meet thee as a man. Now, does that mean he's going to come as a, a different type of creature? Does that mean he's going to come as a woman? No, that's not what it's saying. It's saying that he is not coming as a, a, a mortal, right? He's not coming as a mere mortal because the men and a man that we know now are mortals, right? They're mortal men. Yahweh Shai is a man that is an immortal man. And that has that's two separate glories. That's two separate honors, right? And that is the glory of that Yahweh Shai is going to give also to his, his elect. He is going to allow his elect to put off the mortal clothing, which is the flesh and blood that we have right now. That is um, that you get through the act of reproduction. That you get through the act of reproduction of men and women. But the bodies that the first fruits are going to have are not going to be bodies that came from the uh, uh act of sex all right it's not going to be a, a body that comes from the uh reproduction all right these bodies are are coming from the heavens see so it says i'm gonna read this in the nlt it says and furthermore it is not the angels who will control the future world we are talking about all right because the lord gave man dominion actually we're just going to read it it says for in one place the scriptures say, what are mere mortals? See, in, in, a, in the KJV, it says, it says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? So when it's speaking about a man, it's speaking about a mortal. All right. So it says, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? Or the son of man or, or a son of man that you should care for him. Yet you made them only a little lower than the angels. And crown them with glory and honor. All right, because when you think about the uh, the glory of the creations, right? You have the heavenly Father, and then you have obviously Yahweh Shai, right? And then you have the angels, and then what are after angels on the level, right? The 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 next um, creature that has dominion, right? Or the next creature in in the in the um, in the uh, process of rank. Is man okay man is right is is underneath angels and when it comes in a process of uh, of authority and rank so it says you gave them authority over all things now when it says all things it means nothing is left out okay but we have not yet seen all things put under their authority and this is how you know that Esau, Edom, right, uh, uh, with all of his technology and all of his, you know, able to search, right, the, you know, search out things, he has still does not have the actual authority that man was given, okay, by the Heavenly Father, okay? He still doesn't have the authority because all things are not subject or underneath uh, uh, Esau in his age. OK, and for one for one instance, you have the what they call the law of gravity, right? The law of physics. When the scripture says when uh, it says all things means nothing is left out, meaning in the human experience that we have, nothing should be subject. Uh, we should have nothing that is uh, 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 over us. We should be have we should have everything that everything uh, according to the human experience should be subject underneath us. And that's why you see Esau tries tries to create things with technology to defy 
right? Uh, uh, these these laws are trying to, to overcome these things that you know uh, the human experience uh, has, right? He he'll create an airplane so he can fly, but even in that, he can't stay, you know, in 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 flight. Eventually, the laws of physics will overcome him because he has not subjected the laws of physics uh, uh, underneath him, right? He can't, you know, he'll, he'll create a submarine to go underneath the water, to go to the depths of the water. But guess what? And then that, and that just happened last summer where you had that. They try to go to the Titanic and then something broke down and then the pressure of the water basically uh, explode or imploded the uh, submarine and the people in it died. See, so even if that didn't happen, they couldn't have stayed underneath the water, you know, uh, for they only could stay underneath the water for a certain amount of time. OK, and then the pressures of the water and, you know, that um, uh, uh, law would have basically uh, subdued him. So he doesn't have authority over the, the waters. He doesn't have authority over the heavens. He doesn't have authority over fire. Right. He doesn't have authority over air. See, these are elements. Right. These are compounds of uh, things that human experiences right that's why even the angel had told Ezra, uh, Ezra can you uh, weigh fire <laughs> right what what is the what is the weight of fire that's a that's a human uh thing actually let me see if I can find that because he actually says that um weight fire All right second Ezra chapter 4 verse um Five, it says, it says, and I tell, and I said, tell on my Lord. And he said unto me, go thy way, weigh me the weight of fire or measure me the blast of wind or call me again the day that has, that is past. Then answered I and said, what is, what man, see that, what man is able to do that, that thou shouldest ask such things of me. He asked me, uh, he said unto me, if I should uh, ask thee, how great dwellings are the midst of the seas or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep or how many springs are above the firmament or which are the outgoings of paradise? Preadventure, thou wouldest say unto me, I have never went down into the deep. Nor as yet into hell, meaning what? The earth, the grave, right? Neither did I ever climb into heaven. And it's interesting, right? Just a side note where it says, nor as yet into hell. Okay, because if you uh, are alive long enough, you're going to what? You're going to die. And then your body's going to be put into uh, uh, the grave. So that's why he says, nor as yet into hell. It's not talking about some... Uh, a spiritual realm where you got demons torments you know that's that's greek mythology folly okay reading on it says nevertheless now i have asked thee about only the fire and the wind and the day where through thou hast passed and of the things from which thou cannot uh, thou canst not be separated and yet canst thou give me no answer he said unto me, he said more, uh, so like he said more over unto me, thine own things and the things as are grown up with thee, canst thou not know? See, so the things that you grew up with, your own things, your own uh, uh, human experience, your own earthly, you know, uh, um, elements. You can't even tell me about that. So he was basically telling them and how you want to even search out the things of the most high. Right. You can't search out the things that you you grew up with. How are you going to be able to search out the things that are most hot? But nevertheless, right, going back to the point. So these things, it says in the scriptures, you gave them authority over all things. Speaking about man. Now, when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. So nothing is supposed to be left out underneath the authority that we ultimately are going to have when it speaks about man it's just speaking about the sons of god okay let's not get stupid and say oh you know everybody no this is speaking about the sons of god and when you read this scripture 
this this verse on down it really it, it tells you that right that's why no actually let's keep reading let's see if we'll get to it right but it says but we have not yet seen all things put under their authority see so even until this day we this is two thousand years later now you have certain things that esau has been able to do with his technology right which uh uh when you look at it from a uh a human uh capable capable sense especially if you've seen it during their time like like john the revelator when he saw esau or the second beast he saw these things that he was able to do as miracles right and even you know they they'll, they'll brag about their scientific breakthroughs right they're able to do certain things that you know they never thought they would be able to do and really they're only just scratching the surface like i said like the scripture says there's certain elements foundational things that this devil still can't do right and i always make mention with all of his technology and all of his research the earth is 70 percent water and they have only discovered uh five percent of the earth five percent so like of the water if this earth is 70 percent water and you've only discovered five percent of water that means you have actually not even touched <laughs> even a, a, a small percentage of the earth. OK. So we st uh, to this to this day have not seen all things put underneath man's authority. And that ultimately is because the one who the heavenly father set up to have the man, right, the son of man that the heavenly father set up to have um, authority over all things on the earth is who? Yahawashai, right? It says, what we do see is Yahawashai, who was given a position a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Yahawashai tasted death for everyone, okay? And once again, that's speaking about all of Israel, right? It says, God whom but God for whom and through whom everything was made chose to bring many children into glory. See, it didn't say all nations or all children. It said many. And it's going to tell you which many of these children is, is speaking about. And it was only right that he should make Yahawashai through his suffering a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. And that salvation is what us putting off the mortal and putting on the immortal clothing, okay? Being a man, but a, a, a glorified man, a man with bodies made from the heavens. So now Yahweh Shai is the, is, uh, Salaki, so now Yahweh Shai and the ones he makes holy have the same father. Who is that? The elect. It says, that is why Yahweh Shai is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters, right? His brethren. And he goes into the scripture for for he said to God, I will proclaim. And this is in uh, Psalms, I think, 22. Right. David speaking through the spirit. Right. He says, I will proclaim your name to my uh, brethren. I uh, saying I will declare thy name to thy brethren in the midst of the church. while I sing praises unto thee. Right. In the church, the assembly of of uh, people. All right. Or, or when we actually go to the definition, it says the assembly of Israelites. OK, that is what the church are, the assembly of Israelites and that assembly of Israelites that are in Yahweh Shai being the head of the church. It says, and again, I will put my trust in him. That is I and the children who God hath given me. And that is uh, Isaiah 8 and uh, 17 verse 18. See, so this here's the point. It says. Um. Because God's children are human beings, see that, made of flesh and blood. So the Most High's children, which is the uh, first fruits of Yahawashai, right? That's the order, Yahawashai, and uh, uh, then the first fruits, and they that be with them, the, uh, the, uh, after the 144, you got the elect. They are what? Human beings. They are made of flesh and blood. The son the only begotten also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could he die and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. 
Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as as slaves to the fear of dying. And that's the position that a lot of our people are in. They're bondage. They're in bondage unto unto uh, the spirit. No, uh, 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 Esau Edom, who comes after the spiritual demon Satan, because this devil has the power to kill right now, right? Which is why Yahweh I said, "Fear not him that has power uh, uh, to kill the body, but not cannot kill the, uh, the spirit, right? Cannot uh, kill the soul." See, so a lot of our people they are subject unto Esau, and you and you see that now, but especially during the hour of temptation, during the time of uh, of that, that karagma, a lot of our people are going to take that karagma because they're going to fear death they're going to fear what uh, uh life which they're going to think it's death they want to fear uh, uh not being able to live without serving and, and without uh, uh bowing the knee to esau okay um verse 16 it says we also know that the son did not come to help angels he came to help the descendants of Abraham. See that? And that is, that's the point. He came, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Now, Abraham, as we know, right? He is the father of uh, Isaac, right? Which that's where the covenant went through and through Isaac, Jacob, and through Jacob, his 12 sons. So that is why Yahweh Shai came, right? It behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. It is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So that is why when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he came as uh, uh, through that lineage. He came through the seed of man. And that is why he is known as the son of man. However, right, he is also and first and foremost, the son of God. And the Most High gave him <coughs> this realm. Right. And he gave him uh, uh, the experience of being human, but uh, a glorified human. Right. With a body made from the heavens to be the ruler of the uh, the things that are created. OK. Starting with. The earth. All right. Yahweh Shai right now is in is in is in his father's throne in his father's kingdom. Right. Actually, let me see. Get that in the book of uh, Revelation. Uh, Revelation three, I believe. Verse 19. So like it, verse 21, it says to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. See that? And that is where in the spiritual realm. All right. Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the father sitting down in with glory and honor in his in, in, in the father's kingdom, right in the father's throne. However, this realm all right, the earth is Yahweh Shai's throne. This is his kingdom. Okay, so when we go to, that's why uh, Psalms, the second chapter, verse uh, seven, it says, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. See that? Because why? He has uh, uh, been given authority, going back to John the fifth chapter, he has been given authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Because he was created to rule the earth in, 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 in a, in a uh, flesh and blood, but glorified state, right? Because when Yahweh Shai comes and when we get changed, we're still going to have, you know, we don't know the ins and outs of it. But we're still going to have blood. We have blood flowing through our veins. We're still going to have veins. We're still going to have a heart. We're still going to have a brain, right? But it's all coming from the heavens. And like and like John said, we don't know how we shall appear, but we will know that we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. He is the first uh, uh, to have that that body, right? And that body, that reward, he's coming with to bring unto who? His elect. OK, so now when we go to uh, Daniel, right, Daniel, the seventh chapter. Uh, verse 13, it says, the son of man presented, I saw in the night visions 
and behold, one like the son of man. So once again, he saw someone that looked like a man, right? Uh, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. Who is that? The, the, that's the creator, the heavenly father. All right, Yahweh. And they brought him near before him. Who is uh, who is they? The angels with the with the chariots, right? And there, listen to this. And there was given him dominion and glory, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. See, so Yahweh, uh, Yahweh Shai was brought before Yahweh and. That is why in the scriptures it says, sit down at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. When Yahweh Shai gets up off of, uh, uh, you know, his uh, throne, you know, in the in the heavens, sitting thanks to his father, he's coming to take authority, right? He's coming to get authority on the earth, right? He's coming to subdue all things unto himself because this this the earth and this realm was given unto him. All right. He is the first and I say it and I say it again. He is the first man and the only man to experience this life, to experience life as a son of man and do it perfectly to always do the things that please his father. Actually, let's get that. Always do, please. Right. This is John chapter eight, verse twenty nine. It says. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things which please him. See that? So he he always did what the Heavenly Father pleased him. Yahweh Shai, when he was on the scene, he never did anything that uh, upset his father. And what would upset Yahweh? Yahweh? Unrighteousness, right? Sin. So Yahweh Shai, when he was on the scene, remember, he had a human experience. We're not talking about some... Uh, uh, mythical no this was he actually walked the earth in flesh and blood had parents right felt things got hurt got you know he had emotions but in everything he did it was all righteous it was all correct it was all just all right and that is why he received as it says in um daniel's the seventh chapter there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve and obey, should serve him. His dominion, so his rulership, is uh, an everlasting rulership. Because you see now, you have rulers, you have uh, dominions, you have kingdoms. They all come and go. Empires, you they they rise and they fall. Yahweh Shai, his kingdom, his rulership, his authority, his name is never going to fade away. Okay? That is the honor that the heavenly father has bestowed upon the son in all nations everything is subjected and subdued to that to him okay acts um where is that acts chapter 10 verse 42 it says it says and he commanded us to preach unto the people and so like is it yeah. Yep. Uh, preach to the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of of the quick and dead. All right. Meaning what? He is a judge of the living and the dead because you only are al alive and dead. Living and dying is, is, an, is a is a mortal experience is a earthly experience. When you're in the heavens, there's no such thing as dying in the heavens. In the spiritual world, dying is really just exiting this uh, mortal life and then going back to the spiritual realm. Right. When you are living. When you have a, 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 a living on the earth, <laughs> that is a, a a mortal experience. All right. Or that's an earthly experience. So Yahweh Shai was ordained by the Heavenly Father to be the judge over everything that lives and dies. Okay, um, actually, when we go back to John the eighth, uh, John the fifth chapter, um, 
Then we go up to verse 22. It says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgments unto his Son. Why? Because he is the Son of Man, as it says in verse 27. He is just the top. He is the, the, the perfect. He is the, the greatest Son of Man. He is the greatest uh, uh, man, right? Greatest creation that ever that that was ever created that ever walked the earth so it's only right that he would have dominion over all things okay uh going back to acts and we're gonna wrap this up acts 30, 17 verse 31 it says because he had appointed a day right days happen where on the earth the days are ordered by the sun and the moon right time so the lord has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. All right. And the heavenly father is going to judge the world by who? Yahweh And it says in righteousness. Why? Because what is one of Yahweh Shai's titles? Uh, Malak Tazadak, the king of righteous righteousness. Okay. That is once again, another reason why he always do the things that the heavenly father uh, uh, is pleased in because he is the king. He is the top righteous. He 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 was created as in his in his perfected uh, form, right? As as the Messiah, he was he was put on the earth with the spirit without measure. So he always did right. Okay, he is his 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 makeup, right? His his you know metaphorical spiritual makeup was just complete righteousness. So it says, by that man whom he ordained, wherefore, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he has raised him from the dead. All right. So it says in the NLT, for he hath set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he hath appointed. And he proved to everyone this by raising him from the dead. Right. The only man to be raised from the dead and to never experience death again. Okay, so um, last one here in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, it says, Which uh, he wrought in Hamashiach, which means he worked in Hamashiach when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. That's why in Revelation it said that he is sitting on uh, the right hand of the Father in his throne. Okay, for uh, far above all principality, and power and might and dominion in every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come see so it says he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else not only in this world but also in the world to come okay he's uh, uh, in, that, in during that time right Yahweh's name was above any names. He was above the Caesars. And in this time, he's above any any name. OK, the Rothschilds, the the, the uh, uh, presidents, the Shiaks of Sheikhs, the Sheikhs of of Saudi Arabia, all of that. OK, no matter what realm or no, no matter what time period, Yahweh Shai is far above all principalities and all powers. Because once again, he is the only, he is the begotten of the father and the only one that has done the things that please the father in their whole, in this whole entire uh, existence as last, the last time he was on the earth. Okay. Um, verse 22, God has put all things under the authority of Hamashiach and have made him the head over all things for the benefit of the church. Okay. So. You know, that's that's, uh, you know, basically all the scriptures that I had. But, you know, just tying it in and uh, closing it out. The Heavenly Father gave Yahweh Shai this authority and he rightfully deserves it. He rightfully is rightfully his. OK, he gave him the authority of being the king of the earth because he experienced right what it is to be a son of man. He experienced he he, he had the earthly, the, the mere mortal experience, but he completed it in uh, complete righteousness, right? He, he did it, all right, in complete obedience to the Heavenly Father. And no man uh, can ever say that they've done that, all right? And it's through 
Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, that we also get to partake of that uh, of that upgrade, okay, uh, of being, of having dominion over all things on earth. Because that's what uh, man is supposed to have. We're supposed to have all things subjected underneath us. All right. And when Yahweh Shai returns and gives us those bodies, we are going to have the, uh, the complete human experience subject underneath us. That's why we'll be able to fly. We'll be able to uh, uh, go to the depths of the ocean. Right. We'll be able to, you know, uh, 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 experience everything. We don't have the knowledge of all of the, the animals, the plants, the elements, the, the elements are going to be subject unto us. We'll be able to tell you hey, what is the weight of fire. See, because all things will be subject unto us because all things are subject unto Yahweh and he is uh, uh, granting us to be partakers of that glory with him. All right. So. You know, hey, with that, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises to Yahweh, Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, Ba Shem Rokha Kodash, Shalom.